Hello, and welcome. I am Ixalite, and this is my channel. Today we're going to start a new series, and it is a road trip through the United States. And I'm going to talk about each state's most haunted places. Now, if you live in one of these states, and your favorite most haunted place is not mentioned, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll go take a look. Maybe the next time I can add it to the list. Or at the end of the series, add all the places that I didn't put in the first time. Alright, before we get started, if you would give this video a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. If you are not subscribed and you would like to be, I would appreciate that as well. If you'd like to be notified when my content goes live, please go ahead and click that bell. And don't forget to share videos that you like. Also, I have merchandise for sale and I'll put the link below. Today we're going to start off in the corner in Washington State, which also happens to be my home state. So, here we go. Number 10 on the list happens to be a place I've gone to. I'll tell you about that in a minute. The Campbell House is one of Washington's most well-known historical landmarks. It was designed and built by Kirkland K. Cutter in 1898 and was first owned by Amasa Basileel Campbell. There is a very sad history attached to this house. In the early 1900s, three of the Campbell children were murdered by a burglar who also kidnapped the fourth child. That child was never returned. With such a tragic past, it is hardly surprising that the Campbell House is one of the most haunted houses in the state of Washington. Visitors describe feeling a very unsettling feeling upon entering the house and are often overcome with dread. There is a portrait of Amasa Basileel Campbell in the house that is said to follow visitors with its eyes as they wander the house, perhaps looking to see if the kidnapper ever returns. Now, this house was turned into a museum, and because I was raised just outside of Spokane, and as I grew up, I lived in Spokane, but throughout my childhood, we were taken to the Campbell House every single year on a field trip. So, I feel as though I have spent a great deal of time in this house and I can tell you one thing there is a very dark feeling there now because we were children and we were on an educational school trip we were never told about the murders of the three children nor the kidnapping of the fourth in fact we were taken into the bedrooms of the children who had previously lived there we were shown how their hair was curled, some of the clothes they wore, and it always felt cold and uninviting. But the downstairs back of the house, where you could look out the windows and see the back of the property, for some reason that part of the house is always the part of the house that really really made me feel uncomfortable and that to this very day I still dream about the back of that house that property and that feeling that it gave me number nine the Black Diamond Cemetery the Black Diamond Cemetery in Black Diamond Washington was created for and by the company who mined there for its employees and local residents. 
the very fact that the Black Diamond Cemetery is a burial ground makes it a little creepy in itself, but when you add the fact that it is actually considered one of the most haunted locations in Washington, it really kicks up the spook factor a few notches. It has been said that visitors have heard whistling and voices when they are sure that they are alone. There have also been reports of the swinging lanterns of the dead coal miners seen on foggy nights. Number 8. University Heights in Seattle University Heights in Seattle was at one time a school, but it has since been converted into a community center. It is also considered to be one of the most haunted buildings in Washington, thanks to the spirit of a little boy who is haunting this building. This child is believed to have been a student at the University Heights when it was still operating as a school, and it seems like he has never left. He is often seen and heard playing in the halls. However, he certainly does not seem to be alone in the building since many visitors, staff, and even paranormal investigators have all said that they have heard what sounds like a small group of children laughing and playing in the building. At least the boy won't be lonely. Number seven, Tacoma Old City Hall, Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma Old City Hall has been at the center of various reports of haunting since the mid-70s. According to local town records, the police were called to the old building on a number of occasions starting in 1974 to investigate a variety of different disturbances, including lights going on and off, noises coming from inside, fire alarms sounding, and even the intruder alarms being triggered. Those who reported the disturbances believe that someone was breaking in, but on each occasion, the police could find no evidence that anyone had ever been inside. There were no signs of forced entry, nothing had been disturbed, and there was no logical explanation for the disturbances. Number six, Fort Vancouver National Historical Site, Vancouver, Washington. Fort Vancouver dates back to the 19th century, but before that it served as a fur trading outpost. It stands on the Columbia River and is located partly in Washington and partly in Oregon. Like so many other old and ruined buildings, Fort Vancouver has its fair share of secrets hidden within its walls. One of the most active buildings is said to be the Grant House Art Center, which stands among the houses in Officer's Row. Some of the strange phenomena that has been seen reported there includes phones ringing when they are completely unplugged, doors opening or closing all by themselves, and there is one particular ghost whose staff have nicknamed Sully that rather enjoys sitting in the cafe and drinking his coffee. Number five, the Mount Baker Theater in Bellingham, Washington. The Mount Baker Theater opened in Bellingham in 1927, and ever since it first opened its doors, the building seems to have been plagued by ghosts. Just some of the reports that have been recorded here include unexplained noises, cold spots, strange disembodied voices, balls of light, and even the occasional apparition. The stories say that there is a resident ghost of a young woman whose name is Judy, and for years the theater have had reports of her developing crushes on male projectionists 
and ushers at the theater. And when she picks a crush, they'll hear their name called across the stage, or they'll feel ghostly touches on their backs or shoulders. Someone better start talking to HR about this. And she's just one of four ghosts that paranormal investigators have discovered there. With all of this strange paranormal activity going on, it is not difficult to see why Mount Baker Theater is considered to be one of the most haunted places in Washington State. Number four, the Oxford Saloon in Snohomish. The Oxford Saloon in Snohomish, Washington is considered to be one of the top haunted places in the state. It has been investigated by a number of different paranormal investigators, and many of them have picked up some very clear examples of electronic voice phenomena. The saloon was built in 1900, but has been modified considerably over the years. It has seen more than its fair share of violence over the years as well, especially down in the basement and in the men's card room. One of the most documented murders here is the death of a policeman named Henry, who was a regular at the saloon and who may have even worked as a bouncer on his days off. He is believed to be one of the many spirits haunting the Oxford Saloon today. He most often appears on the basement stairs, but is also known to pinch women in the ladies' room Doot, 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 doot. Hello, HR. I think we have a problem. On the upper floors, there are said to be three more ghosts. A man in a bowler hat and two female spirits. One of these ladies is a madam known as Kathleen. And she is described as an older woman dressed in purple with matching purple bows. The other lady is actually a girl. Her name was Amelia, and she was forced into prostitution by Kathleen, and her body was found dead in a closet on the property. Number three, Kell's Irish Pub in Seattle. I've been there. That's for you, Rob. Once known as the Butterworth Building, this former mortuary is now a very popular bar called Kell's Irish Pub. It is not only one of the most haunted locations in Washington State, but it's considered to be the most haunted pub in North America, and has even been the focus of a couple of different paranormal television shows. A large number of bodies have passed through the mortuary thanks to disease and epidemics, mining accidents, and violent crime, and that has certainly left its mark on the property. Just some of the unexplained activity that has been documented here includes mirrors spontaneously shattering for no apparent reason, plaster falling from the walls, Glasses being swiped off surfaces by unseen hands and disembodied voices. The owner also claims to have seen an apparition sitting at the end of the bar, which he described as a mixed-race man with very thin hands and wearing a suit jacket. Interestingly, some of the bodies that have passed through the mortuary here would have been the victims of our next haunted location, Starvation Heights Sanitarium. Starvation Heights Sanitarium in Olala. Starvation Heights Sanitarium was operated by Dr. Linda Hazard and her husband, Sam. But the doctor was using a very strange treatment method to treat her patients, starvation. Needless to say, this was not an effective treatment, and a large number of her patients died. These bodies were incinerated within the sanitarium 
to cover up the mistreatment while Dr. Hazard maintained her public image as a strong female leader. However, behind the scenes, as you can see, she was not only evil and greedy, but crazy. Today, the foundation of the building and the incinerator are all that really remains. Well, apart from the spirits of the former patients that are said to be roaming the ruins. And here we are at number one, Northern State Mental Hospital, Cedro Woolley. At one time, as many as 2,000 patients lived in the Northern State Mental Hospital. A large percentage of those patients would also have died in the building due to a variety of different causes. Some would have died from natural causes, of course, but far more died as a direct result of the strenuous physical labor, electroshock therapy treatments gone too far, botched lobotomies, complications during forced sterilization, and some were just straight out murdered. It will come as no surprise there was so much death and despair and violence linked to this property. It has become one of the most haunted places in the state. There have been various reports of paranormal activity, including one of the most common sightings, an apparition of a nurse pushing a male patient in a wheelchair. Other common reports include shadow figures, disembodied screams, and cold spots. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to take one more stop in Washington before we move on next time. And it's going to be my hometown, as it is well known for famous murders. Um, that certain kind of assaulters that we can't mention the word of and still be monetized. Very strange and mysterious things. So, I think you're going to like that one. And I hope you come back for it. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Good night.